Welcome to the first video in a series of videos that I'm going to be doing on the book of Matthew. I'm, go I'm going to be going through every single word from the book of Matthew, reading every single word, and uh, occasionally commenting as I read. Now, um, I want to you know, begin by uh, explaining my pronunciation of some of the names here. Uh, I'm going to pronounce some of the names as per the uh, Hebrew way of saying it, or in some cases, the archaic Hebrew way of saying it. Now, there are names I know that we, I don't offhand know the exact uh, Hebrew way, the original Hebrew way of saying it, and now I'm just going to say it as per, you know, uh, modern day pronunciation, you know, English transliteration, um, that everybody knows it, uh, knows the name by. Now, in particular, I want to just touch on the name of the Lord. Um, now, I have had somebody ask me a question, why do you even say Jesus? Why don't you use the original Hebrew pronunciation of Yeshua? Um, my answer to that is that uh, most people know him as Jesus. Uh, so I'm going to be using both the name, I'm going to be saying Jesus and Yeshua. And uh, I say that because most people know him as Jesus. And I, th I think that the Hebrew pronunciation of Yeshua would probably, you know, that would be better. Um, but I think he answers by both. I think he answers by both Jesus and Yeshua. Um, you know, for example, some people mispronounce my name. Uh, and so I know what they're talking about. I know who they're talking to, you know, so I answer by different pronunciations of my own name. I think that Jesus himself or Yeshua himself would answer by different pronunciations of that name. And I don't, I don't think it's particularly important, you know, in, in a way that we pronounce it exactly the way he did or exactly the way they did 2,000 years ago. Although I think that would be uh, a very good thing to do. Um, I think that basically the name is, uh, it's more important that people understand who you're talking about as opposed to uh, pronouncing it exactly. You know, because even back then, we know there were different di different dialects, different ways of pronouncing. You know, even Hebrew names, and in in amongst even you know uh, Hebrews and the Jewish people back then. So, uh, yeah, and um, yeah, I know that some people pronounce Jesus' name Yeshua. Some of them pronounce it as Yahusha, and all kinds of other different pronunciations. I'm just going to, I'm going to use the name Jesus. I'm going to also. Um, use the name Yeshua. I'm going to use them interchangeably. Sometimes I'll say, uh, sometimes I'll say Yeshua, sometimes I'll say Jesus. Uh, same with Christ. Uh, the word Christ here we know means Messiah, the anointed one, which in Hebrew, in the original Hebrew, is Mashiach. And so I'm going to use all those, those words interchangeably. Sometimes I'll say Christ, although I think that probably Christ is... Um, <sighs> probably the least of my favorite ways of, of saying uh, Messiah because uh, the name Christ has been both uh, blasphemed and taken in vain so much. Um, so I'm going to say, you know, instead of saying, for example, Jesus Christ, I will say something like Yeshua HaMashiach or Jesus the Messiah. So um, let's get on here. Matthew chapter 1, the good news according to Matthew also called the Gospel, according to Matthew. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, or Yeshua HaMashiach, the son of David, the son of Avraham. Avraham became the father of Yitzhak. Yitzhak became the father of Jacob. Jacob became the father of Yehuda and his brothers. Yehuda became the father of Perez and Zerah and Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron. Hezron became the father of Ram. Ram became the father of Aminadab. Aminadab became the father of Nashan. Nashan became the father of Solomon. Solomon became the father of Boaz and uh, by Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed by Ruth. Obed became the father of Yeshe. Yeshe became the father of King David, or 
Daoud or Daweed. Um, let me just stop here for a second. Uh, as you notice, a lot of these names with the with the letter J, I don't pronounce the 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 letter J. Uh, for those of you who know the the letter J, uh, it's in particular the sound of J is relatively new. So I want to go back to uh, even in the old English, the old English, uh, you don't have the letter J. And in Hebrew, which is the original language of these people, uh, you know, for the most part, um, in Hebrew, there is no J or J. So you know, let's say Jesse here is Yeshe. Um, so let's continue. And David as well. Uh, there's no V in, you know, in ancient Hebrew. It's W, right? So it would be Dawid or Dawud. Okay. Uh, sometimes the vowels get mixed up. So V would be a, a vowel as long as, uh, you know, along with A and I. Um, so yeah, let's continue here. So Dawud or Dawid became the father of Sloma. Uh, which is Solomon, by her, who had been Uriah's wife. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam became the father of Abiyah. Abiyah became the father of Asa. Asa became the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat became the father of Yoram. Yoram became the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Yotham. Yotham became the father of Ahaz. Ahaz became the father of Hezekiahu. Uh, Hezekiah. Hezekiahu became the father of Manasseh. Manasseh became the father of Ammon. Ammon became the father of Yoshia. Yoshia became the father of Yochania and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the exile to Babylon, Yochania became the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel became the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel became the father of Abiud. Abiud became the father of Aliakim. Aliakim became the father of Azor. Azor became the father of Sadok. Sadok became the father of Achim. Sadok, by the way, would be uh, like the root word or something you know very similar to Sadiq. Um, in Hebrew, which means righteous one, uh, which one thing you got to understand in Hebrew is that uh, for the most part, Hebrew is just cons consonants, not vowels. So, z you know, Z, uh, D, K, Zad, Zadok, Zadik uh, is pretty much the same, meaning righteous one. Um, so Zad Zadok became the father of Achim. Achim became the father of Aliud. Aliud became the father of Aliazar. Aliazar became the father of Matan. Matan became the father of Yaakov. Yaakov became the father of Yosef, the, the husband of Mary, from whom was born Yeshua, meaning salvation, or Yah is our salvation, who is called the Christ, the Messiah. So all the generations from Abraham to Dawood or D Dawid are 14 generations. From Dawid to the exile to Babylon, 14 generations. From the carrying away to Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations. Now, again, let me stop here for a second. Now, we know that the book of Luke, or the gospel according to Luke, the good news according to Luke, also has a genealogy in it that is um, kind of confusing because it goes from, let's say, Abraham to Joseph. And the names that it names, the, the line that it goes through is different than this. Now, there is, you should be aware that there is, um, uh, there is the theory that uh, Matthew... Uh, and Luke are talking about two different people. One is talking about Joseph, Joseph himself, and the other one is talking about, about the lineage of Mary. So it's important to understand that, um, that uh, that's the consensus among many, many scholars. Um, so let's continue here in verse 18. 
Now, the birth of Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus the Messiah, was like this. After his mother Mary was engaged to Yosef, or Miriam was engaged to Yosef before they came together. In other words, before... Now, this is, again, this is... This here, this this particular phrase, before they came together, implies uh, marital relations, okay? Uh, which a lot of believers deny that Miriam or Mary had any kind of mar- marital relations, remaining a virgin all of her life. However, uh, yes, this phrase does imply uh, they before they came together, uh, before you can even go as far as to say before they had marital relations. Uh, some people believe it means before they had sexual intercourse. She was found pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Yosef, her husband, being a righteous man and not willing to make her a public example, intended to put her away secretly. Okay, so I need to stop here and say, look at here. This is a man who is called a righteous man because he wanted to put her away secretly. Um, Because he didn't want to make her a public example. So initially, obviously here, Yosef thought that Miriam, Mary, uh, was, uh, you know, had an extra marital affair, if you would say, or got pregnant uh, with an unknown uh, man, and uh, and that she was really just playing, more or less, playing the harlot, and so he, being a righteous man, not willing to make her a public example. In other words, he didn't want to go around spreading gossip or slander saying, you know what, this Mary, you know, he, she was sleeping around and she got pregnant even before I even got together with her. You know, I was engaged and before we even came together and, in, in, you know, as a, as a married couple, uh, she was pregnant and I don't know by whom, uh, you know, he could have wanted, he could have went around spreading that kind of news and negative gossip like slander against Mary of which he believed was true. He believed that Mary was sleeping around, um, you know, otherwise he wouldn't even think of putting her away. In other words, divorcing her or, you know, um, calling the marriage off, putting her away secretly. So, yes, uh, if you're really a righteous person, you will not spread gossip, even if you think it is true. You will not go behind someone's back or spread negative reports about people, even if even if that person sinned against you and uh, uh, did things wrong behind your back against you. Joseph was a righteous man. You know, he didn't want to make her a public example. He didn't want to give her a bad name. He wanted to just do it all secretly. He wanted to just say, okay, let's just kind of annul this marriage, so to speak, or just call this off secretly because, you know, look what happened. She got pregnant and I, it wasn't by me, you know. Verse 20, but when he thought about these things, behold, uh, the word behold here means um, look, look at, take notice, observe, see, gaze at. It says, it says it is often used as an interjection. So in other words, you know, it says when he thought about these things, you know, look, look at this, take notice about this. You're like an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Okay. So angels can appear to you in a dream. It doesn't have to appear, you know, angels don't have to appear to you, um, you know, in so-called real life, but in a dream saying, Yosef, son of Dawid, son of Daud, don't be afraid to take for yourself, take to yourself, Miriam, your wife, for that which is conceived in her 
is of the Holy Spirit. She shall give birth to a son, and you shall call, you shall name him Yeshua, Jesus, for it is he who shall save his people from their sins. A lot to talk about here. Um, Just to briefly go over it, some people believe that his people means, um, you know, obviously it doesn't mean everybody in the world because, uh, you know, for example, in John chapter 17, Yeshua prayed, he said, Father, I don't pray for the world. I just just pray for, for those that you gave me. I don't pray for everybody. You know, I'm not, I'm not asking I'm not interceding for, I'm not praying for everybody. I'm praying just for those that you give me. So his people uh, could mean uh, those who are uh, more or less, you know, uh, predestined to be his, uh, to be saved, uh, to be, uh, to be his people. You know, to hear the gospel and to uh, to believe and to repent. Other people believe that the 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 term "his people" mean simply the Jewish people. Um, so yeah, it's very important to understand that that the phrase "his people." I don't believe means it does not mean the world. It doesn't mean every everybody. Um, some people believe that his people mean just the sheep that are his, that are lost, the lost sheep, not the goats from all, from all nations. Uh, some people think that his people mean just the Jewish people alone. Um, yeah. So you shall call his name Yeshua for he, for it is he who shall save his people from their sins. Now, all this had, has happened that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall give, bor- give birth to a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. And that is found in Isaiah, Hebrew name Yeshiahu. Chapter 7, verse 14. Yosef arose from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took his, took his wife to himself and didn't know her sexually until she had given birth to her firstborn son and he named him Jesus, Yeshua. Okay, again, this word until implies that he did know her sexually afterward, okay? Again, I know this goes against uh, a lot of the people who call, you know, a lot of the Orthodox or or Catholics that say that Mary uh, and even, you know, the uh, some of the extra-biblical writings, documents, and Apocrypha that state that Mary remained a virgin the rest of her life, However, you cannot, I mean, or you should not deny that this particular, the phraseology used here implies that Joseph did, in fact, know her sexually uh, after the fact. I mean, you know, Joseph didn't know her sexually until she had given birth to her firstborn son, if, if he didn't know her sexually at all ever, then it, you know, it should have said that here, you know, and Yosef never, um, had marital relations with Mary because she remained a virgin for the rest of her life. She was the eternal perpetual, you know, uh, virgin. Um, but it doesn't say that. Um, so take it for what it is. That is Matthew, uh, chapter one. In the next video, we will do Matthew chapter 2. So thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll see you next video.